Well, hello and welcome. We are doing our East Orange School District Teacher Spotlight with Mr. Brian Katniss, our um, high school teacher who teaches law. And um, if you don't mind telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been a practicing attorney for since 2004. Um, so I don't know, you can do the math. I get, I guess that's 18 <laughs> years. It's a long, long time that I've been an attorney. I started teaching high school about three years ago, but I have taught at law schools while I was practicing in Michigan. I used to run the um, family law clinic for a uh, one of the schools in Michigan. So I would, every week the kids would come in, the students would come in and I would teach them how to do um, interviewing tactics, how to deal with different situations that they would deal with in family law situations. And if something really escalated to the point where there was some abuse, um, I would get the Oakland County prosecutor's office involved. So um, that's how I really got started teaching was teaching in law school. And then I moved to this after being home with my kids for several years and really the thought of going back and practicing law was not that appealing. I really enjoyed coaching my kids and being around the kids. So I thought, you know, I tried to see, okay, well, maybe I'll go and do this teaching thing. And I didn't even think that a position like this even existed at high school level. Yeah. So, I mean, it's pretty unique. Right. So it, it's one of those things that I didn't even know when I first started looking into teaching that this was available. Um, and then, so there was a position available in Newark and I initially was like, well, that's it. That's, that's what I need to do. And, um, started doing the, the, um, uh, what is it called? The, uh, what do they call it through New Jersey? The advanced alternate route, alternate route whatever they yeah. call it. So mm -hmm. I had to take all the classes. So even after having my law degree, it just wasn't enough. <laughs> Simply just that's not enough. No, it's never enough. You never stop you learning. Need, you may need to have some more degrees and more more numbers or whatever after your name. Certifications, yeah. More certifications <laughs> after your name. So um, having completed that and passed Ed TPA and everything. So this is my third year teaching. Uh, it's my first year in East Orange. Uh, I was brought here. Uh, Dr. Tyler and the superintendent interviewed me and, and really wanted to see what I could do to kind of expand the the law and public safety program to be something that not just as oh, okay well we offer this it's like kids want mm -hmm. to do they choose to go to east or they choose to go to campus to to get this certification and, and experience the whole program that's amazing um what is your go-to instructional strategy that you think really maximizes um your approach to the students like how they can really internalize everything you're trying to teach them well, it's old school. It's really the Socratic method. Um, Open-ended question, put the kids on the spot and make them think. I mean, to me, for my specifically for my course, uh, it really gets you to that fourth and fifth level, higher level thinking mm -hmm. because you start changing situations um, and facts, factual situations, which end up cha changing your application of the law, which in turn makes the kids think and analyze and apply things and do that higher level of thinking right. on the spot. Like, oh, what if this person um, didn't, you know, even though this person didn't say something and had they been asked by a police officer, what changes? Oh, well, and P like, so changing things on the spot like that and open-ended questions are really my go-to mm -hmm. after my little direct instruction. And then, I mean, other than that, um, I, I really make sure the kids are able to work with each other. Um, yeah. I mean, yes, this is a law class, but it's a professional class. Um, I don't expect every student to come out of my class wanting to go to law school, but I expect them to know how to treat each other professionally. And so the goal is not to create a hundred lawyers. The goal is to create a hundred professionals. So right. being able to work with each other, being able to work well in a group setting, you don't, so you and I know that you don't get to choose who you get to work with. No, you don't. <laughs> you don't. So you, yeah. you are, you are very much put on the spot to be able to, that is a learned skill to be able to work with other people. Yes. So being able to, 
it is something that I stress every day is that you have to respect everyone. You have to treat you. That's rule number one. I have two rules in my class and that's rule number one, which encompasses a lot. But right. So that that's the two things that I really go. I mean, like on the spot, open ended questions and having the kids be able to work together professionally. So that's those are my two things. If they, if they can if they can interact with me and that open ended question mm -hmm. interact with each other, then I'm doing the right thing. That's great. That's awesome. I mean, they can take that skill, like you said, throughout their whole entire life in any career, which is amazing. And just a final question. So I don't keep you too long. What is one of your one or a couple highlights of this year that you shared with your students, like in terms of visitors that you've brought in to really maximize your instruction? So we had Judge Bora come here. She is the um, musical judge from Newark, and she actually just lives around the corner. So oh, wow. she she uh, helped me last year when I was in Behringer. She uh, helped do our uh, mock trial um, presentation at the end of the year. I invited her to come and speak, and she helped our mock trial team with their opening. With uh, we did when she was here, we did uh, direct exams. So she was able. We both were able to use the courtroom and analyze the kids' direct exams, what they need to work on, how they need to present themselves, how they need to draft the questions. And she got to meet the rest of school. And so she's coming back in March and she's actually, we're gonna actually host Behringer High School. We're gonna have a competition here with them. And so she will grade the, the mock trial and she'll score it and we'll have our team and they'll have their team. And uh, later in May, we're gonna have another mock trial competition where uh, another judge and two attorneys will come in and present a whole nother case. But what the kids don't know is, is that they're not going to do it. The attorneys aren't going to present it. They're going to do it. So the attorneys, oh, wow. will, the attorneys will sim simply help them present the mm -hmm. case rather than watching the attorneys do the case. They're going to do it. And, and it's simply the prosecutor and the defense attorney that they send are simply going to assist the students run their trial. That's going to be an amazing experience. I mean, even for the adults to see, you know what I mean? Like you typically yeah. don't get that experience until you're in law school. <laughs> yeah. And I have Kate Monagle. She's a mediation attorney. She's coming next week. And then I have uh, Ben Rolden. He's a bankruptcy partner and another law firm. He's coming. He will be coming in um, February. And then March is Behringer comes here. And then April is the mock trial competition. So every month I'm trying to do something where someone comes in or we do something that's beyond just school. Yeah, that's amazing. That keeps them coming to class and wanting more. So mm -hmm. um, I applaud you for that. And um, East Orange District thanks you for all of your efforts. Yeah. And we're really, really lucky to have you. So Yeah, the, the one fun thing is, is so the last period was my freshman period when Judge Warwick was here and one of the kids broke a rule in class. And so they were, somebody hit somebody. And I'm like, what happened? Okay, mm -hmm. guess what? We had a try. And like impromptu, the judge and I, she was the defense attorney. I was the prosecutor. And one of the kids got to be the judge. And we held a trial on this so-and-so <laughs> me upside the head. And you never would have, I mean, you would have, let's do this. And they're all jumping up and down because they were excited. Yeah, I mean, it's on-the-spot learning. It's, I mean, you can't get any better than that, especially when they can't wait to participate. That's, like, when the energy is, like, at its full level, you know? Yeah, who wants to be in the jury box? And they dive to get in the thing. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. awesome. Uh, well, thank you so much. And um, hopefully we'll see more of you, all right? Okay, thank you. Thank you.